Hi, Derek Rougeau here with Rougeau Knives, and um, I started editing these videos. Originally, it was going to be one long video, and then I broke it up into the testing portion, and then the making of the test blades, and the heat treating and tempering. Um, so, one thing, I'll, I, as I'm watching the video here, as I'm editing it, I'm realizing that I don't want to mislead you into thinking that this is the way to heat treat uh, 1095 or 5160. In fact, these are simply test blades that I had made um, just to try out these uh, combinations of um, hardness and whatnot. Um, so don't look at it as a definitive form of heat treating of these steels. And, um, with this batch of test blades I was focusing more on um, generating a spring temper and um, from the results I found I'm going to be shooting for a lower um, hardness on the steel and trying to lower hardness and see um, how much strength and durability I can gain out of it. Um, so, thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy the videos. Good day, Derek Rougeau here with Rougeau Knives and today I'm going to be working on a couple test blades. So I have my pattern here that I'm going to trace out on this uh, 5160 and 1095. And um, they're each 3 16 inch thick. I have this design here that's really basic, makes it fast to cut this out, profile it, grind it, and then we'll do some torture tests and see, uh, do a bend test and see the difference between the two steels and how they perform. So let's start grinding. All right, we got our test blades ground and ready for heat treat. So I'm gonna stick them in the kiln. Turn it on, and then I gotta program it. Okay, program seven. Segment, one segment, ramp, as fast as possible. We're going to go 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hold, I'm going to say 25 minutes. There we go. Run program. And it's starting. The reason I said for 25 minutes is because I'm going to time it manually um, once it gets up to temperature. Um, because I have two blades in there, I open and close the door, the heat escapes, so I want to be able to turn it back on and let it get back up to temperature and then quench the second blade. Um, otherwise, it's just going to shut off. And then once I'm done, then I'll just stop the program and be done with it. So we'll let that get to temperature. All right, so we've reached 1500 degrees. Now we're gonna start my timer here, uh, 15 minutes, and then I'll quench the first blade. And I've already plugged in my oils. So my oil is, let's see, is it up to temperature? And almost. All right, we're almost there. So it's been soaking in the kiln for 15 minutes. All right, we're ready to go. Now I extended the time so that the kiln doesn't shut off. Um, that way I can have time to do everything I need to do. Um, the oil's up to temperature. 
anywhere from 125, um, no more than 150. Right now it's like 130. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut the kiln off so I don't electrocute myself and pull the blade out. So I'll do one. First one. Flip it upside down. Itch first into the wheel. Pull that. And then dabbing into the oil, and then let's turn that on, and that way it runs the program again and gets it back up to temperature, because it dropped, well now it's 1436 degrees in there, so it did drop a little bit from 1500. Check to see if it's straight, it's straight. Good. Then I'll put in my basket. And then I'll just wait until this gets back up to 1500. Alright, we're back up to 1500. Some people may say I'm a little anal about it, but I want to be at the temperature when I pull it out. So I'll go ahead and turn off in. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and, so it's running, so I'm going to hit stop, so now stop the program, there we go, and I can turn it off, and pull out the second blade. Edge up, now it's down. By moving it back and forth in the oil, it helps quench it more evenly and faster. And it straight. Pretty straight. I'm going to put this over here. Let it finish cooling. A lot of people temper their knives in the kiln, which is a good idea, but it takes over an hour for the kiln to cool. So the reason I do the tempering in the oven is because you want to be, you want to do your first temper while the steel's still hot. You don't want it to drop down to below 125. So by keeping it in the oil, it maintains the temperature. And then wipe them down real quick and then I'll wash them in hot water just to get the oils off that way I don't stink up my house okay I've scrubbed them down with scotch bright in hot water with uh, some soap so the blades are cleaned off you want to get them clean get the oils off so they don't stink up the house and also get any scales off so that the temper is more even um, got this little cheap rack that I picked up at a thrift store and then it's nicely ventilated, we can throw it in the oven. Make sure that it's standing up correctly. And do a temper. I'm tempering at 375 for an hour. That'll be the first temper. Temper, so uh, then we'll harvest test and see where we need to go from there. In a previous video, I talked about how I straighten my blades. I had created this, uh, bought this micarta block and then put in some magnets in there, some rare earth magnets. That way it locks in there. I cut it out with a bandsaw and then ground it so that you get a nice arc. Put it in my vise so it sticks to the jaws and then you take your blade and slip it in there. And then you find wherever the bow is and you crank it down and compensate for the bow. And then you can move it around and straighten it out. Now you want to do that right after you temp, um, right after you quench the knife, you let it sit in the oil for a while, um, you're getting everything else ready and then you want to pull it out and straighten it before you do your first temper. Okay so now our blades 
um, have been heat treated and we've done our first temper. Uh, these two are the ones that just heat treated and they are 5160. This one I had done earlier, I didn't videotape it, and this is 1095. Um, and then also over here you can see that I've also have been experimenting with other different types of heat treating and testing the results on different types of steels. So at this point, um, I'm going to go on the grinder. These are pretty pretty black. Um, go on the grinder and grind everything off, grind the scaling off, get it down to raw steel, and that way it'll also aid in uh, um, hardness testing. So it's not penetrating through the scaling, it's going right into the steel and it'll give me a little more of an accurate reading. Okay, so I ground all the scales off of the uh, 5160 test blades. I've got two of them. One of them I'm going to do a, a much lighter spring temper and then the other one I'm going to um, temper down to what a traditional, you know, a typical knife would be. And then I have a 1095 which I already hardness tested it's at 58 um, and that's going to be, I'm going to temper that down as well. Do a spring temper on that. But the 5160, let's see where this is at. So this is my hardness tester. It's a manual desktop, um, um, desktop harness tester, um, made in China. <laughs> so first, put the blade in there. Now I can't test the edge because it will flex and it will give an inaccurate reading. So I have to test somewhere on the tang. Um, also, I have to keep in mind that when I grabbed it, when I quenched it, I had grabbed it here with the tongs. So the tongs will alter the heat treat back here. So I want to focus on this area in here. Then put a load on it, preload it. There we go. And um, on the dial, I'll explain a little bit later when I do it the second time. But once you get your load set up, you release it. And then give it time for the needle to start moving. There it goes. And then let it go. And then you wait for this lever to finish moving. Now I have this set up for um, Rockwell C hardness testing, so it's using a diamond penetrator. There we go. And then carefully push it back, and this is reading 57. And then we'll do it in another spot. Okay, so what I had done, I had uh, tested it twice here, and now I'm going to flip it over and try the other side and see if I see what kind of reading I get. Also, yes, I know that my needle doesn't register straight on. I've um, double-checked this, and it is accurate. But, you know, it's uh, Chinese-made, so it, the needle doesn't go all the way back to zero. Nice, huh? <laughs> all right, so let's preload this one. So we're, moving, we're spinning all the way around until this little needle hits the red. And then right up to zero. And release. And we'll unload it. And fifty seven. Okay, so I hardness test them, um, and this one's 57, 57, and 58, so they're really close. Um, I did heat treat the 1095 um, separate from the 5160. So um, I'm going to pull this one aside, and then I'm going to temper these down to um, low 50s, and I want to do a spring temper on these and then test it. Okay, we've done our first temper in the oven, 
And now I'm doing my second temper and it'll be in the kiln. Now that the kiln's completely cooled off. Um, let's see here. So I'm trying to temper this to a spring temper. So I'm get, trying to get the hardness down to about 55 or lower. Okay, so we're done tempering. Um, this blade here is the 5160. It's final hardness 51 to 52. And then the 1095 is 53 to 54. And uh, that's about where I want them. And I'm gonna just do a quick paracord wrap um, to create a nice, cheap, comfortable handle. So we're just gonna get this done real quick. Alright, now it's time to put a cutting edge on these things. I'm switching to a 400 grit belt and starting to polish the edge of the cutting edge. Alright, and uh, so now finally I'll strap it on a leather belt. That's sharp. Not perfectly sharp, but sharp enough. Sharp enough for testing. 